Hi everybody and welcome in. I'm Mark McLean. It's time for our vintage style soda review of the day. And I apologize for not being capable of getting it uploaded yesterday. Uh, so therefore, we are going straight to YouTube. That's right. I am recording right on directly into YouTube and that way there will be no downtime. I really don't have the time today at all because I have a doctor's appointment in about, let's see, uh, 48 minutes. 48 minutes I have a doctor's appointment. So this will be a little brisk. So hang on to your socks, okay? Okay. Today I have chilled some swamp pop. <laughs> you got it, swamp pop. Never heard of that before? Don't feel bad. I'd never heard of it either. <laughs> this is a cream soda, but it's a praline cream soda. Ooh, my goodness. That sounds good, doesn't it? And to make this uh, even more enjoyable, as I've been doing, I will be pouring it into this beautiful wine glass. And... Uh, I like this one. This is really sweet. It is hand blown and uh, it's really nice. Our uh, our daughter gave a set of four of these things to my wife and I and they're uh, exquisite. They really are. So we will be pouring those in there. Thank you Tori for those glasses by the way. And this one is chilled. Already chilled. You learn as you go, you know, and I figured out the best way to drink these sodas, even on, with the advent that, you know, ice was probably not prevalent actually back when they made the majority of these sodas originally, in the beginning at least, and it, even if it was available, uh, then more than likely the uh, people drinking them didn't have the, the funds to go around and chill their soda pops. You know, uh, perhaps maybe the uh, local druggist did because uh, the majority of these were sold at soda fountains inside drugstores, what we call pharmacies, you know. Okay, this is uh, what they're cap looks like it says sugar cane right on it there sugar cane soda um swamp pop premium sugar cane soda and we will be testing this one today but before i start i'll sniff it and it smells wonderful <laughs> it does let's be frank here it smells wonderful like i said Oh, wow. That is just, it's heavenly. That is like, um, well, it's pralines. I mean, you know what pralines taste like? And uh, you know what they smell like? But that's exactly what it smells like here. I'll give you a little background on this. This is made with pure Louisiana cane sugar, okay? It's GMO-free and caffeine-free. It says... Bell's Pralines. Have you ever heard of that brand of Pralines? Bell's? I've seen those in stores. Bell's Pralines. Bell's Pralines. <laughs> it's mentioned twice. It says Bell's Pralines went to the refrain of the Pralinaries in the early 19th century French Quarter of New Orleans as they steadily fanned their delicate candies woo, with palmetto leaves to protect them from <laughs> stifling Louisiana heat. More than likely, they also just used it to swat the flies away, don't you think? Because <laughs> that sweltering Louisiana heat draws flies. It reminds me of an old joke. There was this little girl who was out in the middle of the watermelon patch, okay? And down in Louisiana... And uh, she was sitting there, and she was just crying and crying and crying. And her daddy said, what's wrong, sugar? 
And uh, they named her after the sugar cane, I guess. And sugar said, oh, daddy, these flies are driving me crazy. I can't even sit here and eat my watermelon. And he said, well, girl, take them panties off and eat that watermelon. <laughs> Wow, put up you get it, you get it, you get it, you get it. That's the elbow in the side, okay? <laughs> okay, here we go. Mm, you can tell that I don't care. You you're welcome to that joke. <laughs> if you will take it, please do. Anyway, they steadily fan their delicate candies with the palmetto leaves to protect them from the stifling Louisiana heat. And flies, blah, blah, blah. Little did they know, right? They could have easily worried about the flies another day. Uh, it says, uh, Swamp Pop Praline Cream Soda combines the warm brown sugar. Hey, brown sugar. Ah, toasty butter mm -mm, and pecan flavors of this Creole confection with a traditional cream soda recipe. Ooh, I guarantee as Justin Wilson, the famous French chef from Louisiana, once said, Who, you got to put some onion in there and a little wine. <laughs> and if you don't know who in the hell I'm talking about, that just went straight over your head so quickly it parted your hair right down the center, okay? I know. All right, moving on. I was talking about Justin Wilson, the, the famous chef, Cajun chef. Anyway, it says that... Um, the pecan flavors, etc., etc. This Creole confection uh, was a traditional cream soda recipe. That's what came out of the results. And pecan flavors of the Creole recipe made the traditional cream soda to create a whole new delicious way to beat the Louisiana heat instead of just removing your drawers, you know, <laughs> or drawls. Um, <laughs> no sound effects today. No, we're going straight to YouTube. Unless they remove it. I don't know why. I'm using their music, their recording device. Yeah, Puddle of Police. <clears throat> Moving right on. It says that was the way to beat the Louisiana heat. No palmetto leaves required. That may have you shouting, Bell's Praline Cream Soda. And I, I just did. This is actually bottled... Uh, in uh, Louisiana, in as some people would say Lafayette, but down there they might say Lafayette, Lafayette, Louisiana. Who I guarantee. Mm. Ingredients: carbonated water, cane sugar, natural flavors, caramel color, and salt, phosphoric acid, and uh, sodium benzoate. That's like a preservative, I think. Uh, potassium sorbate, is, I know, is a preservative, and. Uh, Kulalaha extract, whatever that is. Hmm, never heard of that one. Well, at 180 calories, we're going to be sampling right now the Praline Cream Soda Swamp Pop. Yeah, there you go, and it's got your nuts right there. <clears throat> your nuts, not mine. Here we go. Oh my gosh. Oh, gosh. Can you believe that? Woo! Mmm. My friggin' goodness. I'm serious. That's wonderful. Ah! Wow, and it's not... I mean, there's not too much carbonation either. I mean, I can actually enjoy this. Mmm. In fact, I think I'll enjoy it even a little bit more and and allow it to breathe oh look at that amber beautiful golden color that is heavenly I am really surprised I've never heard of this drink until now I mean that's so wild swamp pop premium sugarcane soda Praline cream soda. I love cream sodas. You've already heard me establish that. But look at that wonderful color. And this taste. You know, you could take some pralines and cream, ice cream, and then pour this on top and get a, a float going. 
that would be out of this world, my friends. Mm. Oh. And it tastes just like it smells. And if you've ever had pralines and cream, ice cream, you know what I'm talking about. It's spot on. That surprises me. I'm really taken aback by this. To a time of nicer days when we all sat back on the old front porch, kicked back and had a little extra time on our hands. Is it any wonder that you've got too much time on my hands? Okay, sue me. Surely they won't try and copyright or bitch about copyright infringement on that one. But every time, what's weird is I have been playing the introductions and the outros to my uh, videos for a long time. And honestly, I've been completely left alone by the Pudlow police. Never said a word. But all of a sudden, someone gets a wild hair and they think that something is is uh, wrong. And I bought everything that I have used right off of an app. I mean, it's all on an app. And what wasn't on an app was a sound effect that I had actually bought off of uh, the uh, Apple, the app store from my iPhone 6 Plus. And it just, just pisses me off. I mean, now, uh, every time I upload a, a video, whether I, if I don't have any content musically speaking throughout, I know I need to chill. I'm not going to be on my soapbox today. <coughs> okay, I, I stop right there. Throw on the brakes. It doesn't do a damn bit of good to bitch or to piss and moan. It doesn't. Because, the you know, the Pudlow police don't give a rat's ass. They'd rather protect the big guy who's making lots of money off of their butts. So... You guys go right on ahead protecting the big guy and trying to push down the little guy because this guy will not be forced down. Cheers, guys and gals. Mm. Uh, yeah, but I had a buddy or two that told me the other day, I couldn't think of the guy's names, the two alcoholic brothers, Ernest and Julio Gallo. We will serve no swamp pop before it's time. <laughs> okay, we're pushing on 13 minutes here. 12.51. So uh, I'm going to add some music from the YouTube uh, app uh, onto this. Upload it direct as I drive to... I'm not doing that while driving. I'm going to do that and then drive to my doctor's appointment. I've got about 35 minutes, approximately. And why am I going? Oh, my left knee is shot. Remember I told you that? So uh, I'm going to get that scene about. <laughs> I should read you the text my wife sent me this morning. She said, uh, go ahead and uh, go to your doctor. I'm not going to be able to get off and go with you. She said, uh, Let's see, what else did it say? Um, be careful, I love you, you know, your basic stuff from the wife. And uh, then she said, uh, oh, by the way, this is the place that's at the bottom of the hill. Just a little reference for me to drive and know where the exact place is. So it's at the bottom of the hill, et cetera, et cetera. And I thought that was it. Then she wrote back, oh, and P.S., go ahead and schedule your surgery date if you don't uh, mine. She said, make it on a Monday or a Tuesday. <laughs> so see, she's even convinced I got to have surgery. I've already had one shot inside the knee and, uh, that was to, uh, to help free it up somewhat. It was an injection of, um, steroids and now they're wanting to or have been considering putting some of the of the gel injection in the knee. Have you read up about about that? They they take coxcomb. I'm serious 
from a rooster's head, they had the comb, that little red piece of skin that flaps back and forth up on top. It's basically made of the same substance that the turkeys has, but the turkeys is down here. <laughs> You know, it reminds me of a few other little appendages like that, some uh, little hanging things like that that I won't talk about, but on the men and women for that matter. But uh, <laughs> to make a long story short, they take the cock's comb, and I don't know what they do to it, but they, they fix it so it turns into a gel, and they can inject it into your knee or your joint. And that's supposed to give you about six more months worth of free knee movement and less pain. Then you can get your surgery. So you can either postpone it with probably about a $500 shot or I don't know that for certain, but you know. Mm. The only way you could better this is to have a little caffeine thrown in and that way, not a lot, just a little, that way I could get a little kick on the way to the doctor's office. <clears throat> and it's uh, coming up on the 30 minutes before the doctor's appointment. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, can you tell I'm not looking forward to going? No. Yes, I'm drag-assing. That's what they call it. Drag-assing. Not dragging ass. Drag-assing. Drag slash A-S-S-I-N-G. Drag-assing. That's what I'm doing. I'm drag-assing. <laughs> hmm. But being able to sit back and bitch and moan about certain little idiosyncrasies in life that, that really bother me and uh, talk to you guys over a, a drink as wonderful as this, it makes... It makes it, I guess, a little more bearable. I'm being honest with you, as honest as I can possibly be. It makes it a little more bearable. So, trying to get that bright light out of your face here. Mm. By the way, I had a guy ask me about my hat. He wanted to know how long have I been a fan of these guys. I said... <laughs> I couldn't tell you who they are. He said, oh, that's the Vikings. I said, yeah, I figured that much. But anyway, I said, it's a purple hat. <laughs> it matches my purple shirt. The wife helped me pick it out. <laughs> I could never play sports as a kid. Hell, I was, I was 15 years old when I had <clears throat> my left hip sawed in two. They sawed a V-shape out of the bone and then... I twisted the leg around and made it even because it was growing out of socket. And after they twisted it around so many degrees, they put a steel plate on it and four what they call jewet nails and then pinned the cap back. And so that was at age 15. And prior to that, I had all kinds of, of issues with that left hip growing out of socket. And the right knee was causing issues too. So... I've had issues like that for a long time, but that's not what kept me from playing sports. Even though I uh, I didn't get into sports, I did play a little bit of basketball and, you know, baseball and softball. Just stuff like that around the <clears throat> around with the neighborhood kids around the you know, the area where I live. But anyway, I ended up being a musician. And at age eight, I had been playing music with my dad, and he was in a band and uh, played country music. And so I would practice music with my dad's band. When they would practice, they would need a drummer a lot of times, and I would go practice with them. I had my own little uh, miniature kit, nothing major, and I recall, I recall playing with them and... Uh, then at age 10, getting to go out and play a gig in a place that my dad had to sign for to get me in. He had to say that it was okay because I wasn't of age. And I got in and played drums and I made money for the first time at age 10. After that, it was like 
anytime the band practiced, I had to pra practice too. And then um, I ended up playing regularly at age 16 uh, on a Friday and Saturday night at a uh, local establishment called the Country Valley Jamboree. And that was um, a place that played uh, square dance on Friday nights. And then on Saturday nights, they had a country music show with guests uh, and also uh, comedy. They had a, uh, a guy who was a, a regular, he was a clown, I guess, but he played the role of a clown. He wasn't actually a, a clown with a red nose and makeup, nothing like that. He was uh, just a comedian, basically. Uh, so they did all that, and I did that every Friday and Saturday nights till up about uh, uh, 17 uh, and a half, almost 18 years of age. And uh, so I never did get the chance to, to play sports and never got into it or involved. And I couldn't tell you uh, if one of the stars of, of, of basketball walked in off the street right now and sat down in my chair, I could look at him and say, damn, you're tall. I bet you play basketball, you know, and, and I wouldn't even know who in the hell he was. So that's my situation with sports. Okay. Mm. Wonderful. I'm serious. This is fantastic. If you get the chance, grab yourself a swamp pop. Louisiana, you guys have been hiding this crap, haven't you? I know you have. Yeah, you have. It's nice. It really is. Praline cream soda swamp pop. Wow. I am really thrilled, and I like that. That's a nice one right there. There you go. I'm going to put that one over here. Tomorrow's soda review will feature a vintage style ski. Remember that one? I get a slaw burger fry and a bottle of ski. Bring it on down to my baby and me. The Kentucky Headhunters did that song, and this will be a, a tribute to them and to ski tomorrow as we wrap up our final vintage style old-fashioned soda reviews with me hunter green also known as mark mclean also known as uh, captain hunter <laughs> thank you so much i appreciate it we're at 23 minutes and that's gonna do it i'm gonna wrap it up and make my way out the door to uh, the doctor's appointment Woohoo! Thank you once again, folks. It's definitely appreciated. If you have comments, please put them down below. Make sure they're nice. If they're not, then don't put them there. I thank you so much. If you want to email me, feel free. Hunter Green Bro, as in the color, Hunter Green, and Bro as in brother. Hunter Green Bro at yahoo.com. Thanks again. Peace, guys.